Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I've got a... Well, it's not really an apology because at the time I said it, I didn't know. But having just done a video about my RO unit, I had a question in a comment and it made me think. So, um, we need to go outside. It's easier to show you. Okay, the little unit's busy filling up the Vander bucket, which will take a most to do, most of today I expect for some reason the pressure's dropped off over the last couple of times I've used it um, now I actually said in my video about this thing that the water comes in and goes through a pre-stage filter then through a second stage filter and then through the membrane and that the um, waste water sort of comes out the side um, at the moment is dripping down the drain but um, the question led me to go and have another look and if you follow the path of the water coming in from the tap which is drinking water yeah it comes in through that pre-stage filter it hasn't found a way out yet <clears throat> and then it comes across here and goes into that second stage filter and then it goes into the membrane yeah and the good stuff go comes out here but because of the incredibly high pressure it's got a pressure release valve effectively which goes round there and into the waste so that waste water has been through both of those pre-stage filters so it's better than tap water at that stage because it's been filtered so the quality of the waste water is an awful lot better than I assumed. I assumed the waste water was what was left <coughs> after all the other stuff had been taken out, therefore would be quite a high concentration of salts and things like that, but it's not. It's been through both of those pre-stage filters and probably filters around the edge of the membrane there and comes out because as I say the, the, the high pressure against that membrane it is important to push it through the membrane to get the pure water out of the other end but because of the pressure what doesn't come out of here has got to go somewhere and that's the wastewater but it's actually better than my drinking water and I'm calling it wastewater I think we need to clarify it's not bad water coming out the other end. It would depend on the quality of what went in. But what's going in there is my mains drinking water. <clears throat> and what comes out the other end is cleaned up drinking water. <laughs> I think I'm about to collect some of that and test it and see what it's like. It might find a use for that. The problem will be if I decide to store that wastewater what am I going to put it in? You know, there's three times as much as that as uh, comes out the good good bit. So I, I wouldn't be able to store much of it. But calling it waste water might be a little bit misleading. I think I might test it. Okay, just for a bit of fun then. That's the uh, drinking water that's come straight out of the tap. And that's the waste water that I've just collected from the RO unit. Um, I know my drinking water's got a quite quite a high TDS value, although it varies. Right. That's the drinking water, and that's got a TDS reading of about 255 around. Yeah, maybe a little bit higher, but around 255. Give it a good shake, as they say. Uh, it is higher, yeah. So the so the water passing through those filters is too high. <laughs> it was worth a try. I must admit, I expected it to be lower. I'm not quite sure why that is high. You know, the water's been through both pre-stage filters. That should have got some things out of it. So it's a good job the RO membrane actually does its job properly. <laughs> Yeah, um, nonetheless, that is perfectly good water for putting around the garden, chucking on my bonsai and all things like that at the appropriate times of year. <clears throat> but that's um, 
both of those readings are too high to get anywhere near my orchids, which is why I use the RO unit. That was worth a play. I'm surprised at that reading. I don't understand why. I don't want to. <laughs> so don't explain it. I don't need to know. I just wanted to see the difference. I was expecting the um, filtered, you know, the actual water coming out of the pre-stage filters to be a bit lower. But uh, it isn't, so uh, we're back to square one. My theory of it being wastewater with some of the stuff left in it after the pure water's been extracted, logically would have a higher reading. It's just that the way those pipes are connected up, I had a feeling it might be lower. But it's not, so we're, we're back where we were. Another thought, that could mean that my pre-stage filters need replacing, and they're not doing their job as well as they should be. Now the trouble is, although I've got two brand new ones sat there waiting to be used, I've always thought that by reading the TDS value of the water that comes out the end, the stuff I actually use for my orchids, would be an indication that something that was going wrong with the, um, with the RO unit itself, i.e. the filters. But it seems that the membrane is obviously still doing its job and producing pure water. But um, obviously if the pre-stage filters are not doing their job properly, the membrane in the RO unit itself is going to have to work harder to produce that purer water um, because it hasn't been pre-filtered. So uh, I might actually change those two pre-stage filters as I've got to sit in there doing nothing and I've got no record of when I last changed them. <clears throat> All I can presume is that if I go back into my history on eBay, I can find out when I bought them, because I bought a set of four, two of each. And um, at that time, or very near that time, I would imagine that I changed those filters, and they've been in there ever since. So I'll uh, look into that. But obviously the RO membrane, um, that's still doing its job. If that wasn't doing its job, my TDS reading of the um, output water would start going up because things would be getting through that shouldn't be. So as long as that comes out with a TDS of 9 or 10, the membrane is doing its job, but it may shorten its life if the pre-stage filters are not, you know, working properly. So I think I'll look into that. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of fun as, uh, as I finished all my watering. I didn't have much to do today. Holy clay pots and a few mounts and that was it. Okay, I need to change the filters. <laughs> I just had a look at when I bought them, and I bought them in February 2016. The set of four, two lots of two, were classed as a 12-month supply. In other words, they're expecting them to be changed every six months. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go and uh, I'll go and change them um, once I finish filling the bander bucket. Um, they've obviously been in there a long time and if they're not doing their job properly they're overloading the RO membrane which is not cheap you know that that will cost a fair old bit it's effectively the unit you know the pre-stage filters if you think they cost um, 20 pounds for a set of four so they're they're five pounds each next to nothing compared with the cost of the unit and obviously the membrane in the unit is, is what you're paying for. So when I come to replace that, that will be quite expensive. But then that is still doing its job and it has lasted literally since I bought the unit. So that one's hanging in there well. But yeah, change the pre-stage filters, get those done. And, um, and then I can put in my orchid records that I did it. So I'll have the date they were changed and then I can keep my eye on it in future. That's a bit slack on my part, so we'll get that done. And then, uh, yeah, I think when I've done it, I'm gonna retest the wastewater, see what effect changing those two pre-stage filters has on the water coming out that I don't use, what I call the wastewater. We will see.